Yeah, so I wasn't about to do this, but I figured, you know what? I'm here. I got the time. Might as well. <clears throat> the selection update or selection uh, situation. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. First of all, as we know, the small hats, they own the rights to both of these individuals. So whoever win, whoever wins and whoever loses, they got them both. Because obviously Trump has uh, small hats in his family. And of course, Harris is married to one. And she didn't use his name. And she hardly showed the guy. Only in debates and in this uh, speech. But other than that, she hardly mentioned the man. Because obviously I haven't seen any interviews with her. Mainly because they were all stage, so I didn't really want to watch them all. But, you know, I haven't heard anybody ask her why she doesn't take on her husband's last name. And like I said before in other videos, we know what it's all about. Because for some odd reason, they wanted to sell her on black. Which was pretty peculiar from the uh, beginning. Uh, you don't want a campaign on blackness. Especially a national campaign. If you're in Detroit, Memphis, even Philadelphia, someplace like that, uh, Atlanta, you could try running it on blackness, but not for president. Hell, you can't even run for governor on blackness. Hell, you can't even do that in Mississippi, I don't believe. <laughs> but for some odd reason, they were pushing that, and I thought that was pretty strange because I kept asking myself, what's the purpose? What purpose does it serve to even mention black people, period? Because, you know, the so-called Latinos are supposed to be the so-called second uh, largest so-called minority group. How come they don't jump on them? But they want to talk about this, this, this black shit and Kamala Harris with black. She played into it. See, she was serious and a real candidate. She would have said, no, I'm not going down with this. See, she never had anything to say about what she could do or would do for the country to begin with, because she never really, you know, had any. Uh, I told you I was a campaign manager once and I was the one who came up with their uh, strategies and talking points because they didn't have any. And that's how phony politics is. You think what the. Uh, so-called candidate is saying comes from them. But it doesn't. It does if they're powerful and they know what the fuck to do. But if there's somebody who just wants a job just to get an ego, pad their resume, other people come up with the ideas. So why they went with the black sea, I'll tell you this. When Trump ran the first time, many of us, including myself, thought that they were going to uh, give Hillary Clinton uh, the position because, you know, she, she was running, number one, wife of a former president that was popular. And she seemed to have felt that she deserved it. I don't know why she didn't make a comeback on this, this opportunity, but <clears throat> that's what happened. So what happened was, you could look at it like this. They're like stretching shit. I always tell people, they only allow two parties. People talk about Stein, Small Hat, any of these other uh, shill candidates in third parties. Those people will never win because they never let them debate. Which means that they are biased. Which means that they only want two parties, both controlled by the bankers. So it doesn't really matter who wins because it's both controlled by the bankers. And they're going to continue on whatever it is that they want. But what they do is they trick you because they know there's only two parties, two choices. So what do they have to do? They have to stretch the shit out. To make you forget, make you feel good, 
It's like um, with Bill Clinton. <clears throat> well, I'll go back further. You had Jimmy Carter. One term. Then you had Reagan. Two terms. Bush won. Another term. So that's 12 years of a Republican. Then they bring in this guy, Bill Clinton. Two terms. Then, Bush two, two terms. Then they throw in some new guy, Obama, two terms. Then, this old man, who felt entitled, that's probably why they gave it to him, because, you know, he's been around for a while. Biden, one term. Ineffective so-called president. People will like to say that Reagan was half dead. This guy seemed like he was totally half dead. So, I'm sorry, I said Biden. I jumped right into Biden. Uh, Trump. Then Biden. See, so now it's a Republican. It's a Democrat. And now it's a Republican again. But see, you can only serve two terms. So they split up Trump. Which is a, always a gamble because, you know, you're dealing with people who are pretty old. Uh, so now he gets two terms after another president served a term. Another old man. Now, again, I, I prefer Trump over Harris because Harris is a fucking uh, immigrant. First generation immigrant. Raised in Canada. Under the British crown, she doesn't deserve to be a goddamn president. Tell you, every time, ever since they knocked off JFK, it's been, they've been playing musical chairs with the White House. Just putting in whoever the fuck they want to put in. So, this is what they're doing now. So now Trump is back. Who, who, who? The only thing I've been wrong on, really, was the Hillary Clinton one and Jeb Bush. Because I thought, for sure, I don't know if people remember when I used to talk about that. I thought, for sure, they were going to position Jeb Bush to become a president. Because he had a, a Hispanic wife. But I guess maybe they said, okay, let's calm down on these Bushes. People get too suspicious. But with the Harris campaign... I kept asking why with the rappers, why especially the, the filthiest type of rappers. Why the collard greens? Why the hot sauce? Why the Howard? Why the effort to prove that she's black? I said to myself, man, it just seemed like number one, it has nothing to do with the country. It has nothing to do with black people, period. <laughs> and after it's all said and done, it's clear that that was all done. For one reason. That was to make sure that she lost. That was the only reason that she they, they did all that shit. Because if she was serious and her team was serious about uh, winning the campaign, they wouldn't have done that. Because there's no point in doing that. I don't even think most other people would have given a damn. Whether she says she was black or not, to be honest with you. But for some reason, they want to roll with that type of shit. But um, it was a dumb move. Very dumb. And hopefully Trump will uh, start sending these uh, foreigners back, which I doubt. Because, you know, once they get here. You know, it's going to look bad to just start sending them back. We'll see. And if they think he's serious, maybe they might start heading home before January. So we'll see. But uh, and then you got Democratic black people who think that the end of the world is coming. I'm like, it's stupid because he was already president before. So when you think about it, he wasn't actually bad. 
you know, he, he just wasn't professional, but he wasn't bad. We've seen what Biden and Harris have done, which is bad. <laughs> but um, we'll see who they put up next. But no matter what the case is, it's all phony. It's all propaganda. Because they're all controlled, like I explained in the uh, previous video. I'm sure a lot of people already know that as it is. And also, since I'm doing this, I might as well throw in, this one could be short. But since I'm doing this, I noticed that some comments that were made on that last video about Tariq Nasheed ain't no black activist. You see the comments come in. People, see, some people might still be on the fence thinking that he is not listening and stealing material. That should be proof positive for you right there. Proof positive. So... You know, he'll, he'll keep taking what he, he takes, uh, but that's fine. But to say that he's a journalist now, I said, man, now they they, they really going crazy. Journalists. Never heard Tariq Nashi say he was a journalist. He, he might say he's a whole bunch of other things, and he was a whole bunch of other things that he never admitted to. Like rapper, he hardly even wanted to admit that. <laughs> Actor, he didn't want to admit that. Still don't want to admit that he's a fucking Z-list entertainer. And when I called up that Jason Black and asked him, was he an activist or an entertainer? The answer he gave should tell you that he's a motherfucking entertainer. Because if he had been an activist, he would have said it. But see, that's why when they talk grassroots and shit like that, that goes to show you that they're bullshitting you. They're trying to make you think that they're on the ground and activists. They're not on the ground and they're not activists. You see grassroots in the grassroots. That's why they call it grassroots because you're on the ground. Jason Black, Tariq Nasheed, all they do is make Bullshit documentaries. I don't even know how much money they're making off the shit or what, but they make bullshit documentaries. Now, I admit I haven't seen Jason Black's documentary, but when they get people of note in these documentaries, that goes to show that they got to be connected in some kind of way. But they're not grassroots. They're not activists. But I'll keep it on topic. This Again, this one might actually be a short one. Harris... Uh, <clears throat> kept her speech short. She got destroyed, really, the, almost the entire country <laughs> said, no way. Now, I was telling you because I was reading the tea leaves just from hearing white people in rich suburbs and their chit-chat. And I already knew they weren't voting for her. <laughs> uh... Could be because uh, she wasn't white or what have you, but they always got to do that. See, they give her a white husband just like that. Can 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 Tanji give her a white husband so white people can be conflicted? Like I used to argue with people on YouTube about simple things like R and B or rap. Uh, videos of the 80s or something or bands of the 60s or something like that because when they see a uh, white person in a black group that white people get excited like oh shit we know how to make the funk and you black people you need us that's how that's how they start feeling and I said no 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 that's not what it is they know that white people are racist that's why they'll throw in a token white person like the white guys they had in Sly and the Family Stone They'll throw them in there to attract you. So you'll say, oh, okay, I can get with the Sly and Family Stone now. Because Sly Stone even said he wanted a multicultural shit and, 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 you know, he wanted everybody to be able to feel good. Because the people he had and the, the white guys he had in the group, you know, they didn't really do nothing special. You could have gotten any, any drummer. I forgot what, the, I think the other white guy, I forgot what the fuck he played. 
but the one white guy I played it uh, was the drummer. I mean, you know, Sly Stone was telling him what the fuck to play. <laughs> you already know that. You get any kind of drummer to replace him. Uh, then you got other groups like like uh, Sade. Even though she's coming from the UK, but you see her group was uh, white guys. So that's why she got the run on MTV and all that love from the white crowds. Cause then she was type of j jazzy type anyway. Uh, rappers having white people in the video. Rick James having white people in the video or even a white in the band. Any of that kind of shit is to help put white people's minds at ease. So that's why these they, they do this shit in the politics. They uh even on the sports shows. You'll see they'll have the black guy criticizing the black guys and the white guys trying to praise the black guys. Just like I find the conversations revolving around Lamar Jackson very suspicious over the years. It's like sometimes they break their necks to overly praise him. But then they'll have some black guys criticize him. Then when you see a true talent, like, uh, not saying that he's not a true talent, but you know what I mean, when it comes to the passing game, you see the Jaden Daniels or the um, Patrick Mahomes, you don't hear the crit criticism from them because they already are elite in the passing game. The only thing I've heard with the Jaden Daniels, they kept saying, well, you can't really tell me, you can't say for sure that, Jaden Daniels was the reason why the commanders are doing what they're doing as opposed to the coach. See, we're back to that old when shit is going well, it's the white coach's fault. When shit is going well and the coach is black, like Tomlin, it's the coordinator's fault. His is his skills. But see, when a coach like the coach that was on, on the Saints got fired because the quarterback went out. So nothing was happening. People say that's not shocking, but they don't get Tomlin the credit for still getting his team into the playoffs with whack-ass quarterbacks. Now that he has two options, you see the difference. Even though we'll see what, what they, I think they, I forgot what team Pittsburgh plays next, but I think they play a more serious team this time. But, um... It's, how, it's always a racial politics with concerning black Americans. And I always tell people the black shit goes back to Europe because they are always overly concerned. I mean, you, you go to almost every European country. It's always about black. Even people, countries where there supposedly aren't too many black people, at least that's what they say. They always got a problem with black people. And you would have to ask yourself if black people had not been in control and weren't on top of the world, why would they even be concerned with black people? Fucking Genghis Khan and the, uh, the Huns attack Eastern Europe. I don't see any hatred for them. And you can still see the mixture of the Mongols and the Eastern Europeans. But of course, white people like to lie about that too. They act like that shit. Nah, we ain't mixed with them. Pretty clear. Like I was watching these uh, <laughs> Jim Croce uh, uh, videos. I said, man, you can't tell me that man didn't have heavy degrees of blackness. Even if his hair was straighter, I don't know which is his real hair. But um, unless his shit curled up and... <laughs> towards the late 60s with all that blackness in him I mean come on that's proof positive right there and it's crazy too how they snapped the final picture of him in the, on the plane before that shit crashed too I was reading about that shit they said he was in a hurry to get out of there even though he wasn't supposed to get out of there now that's an example of shit that happens in your life where the shit didn't have to happen had shit gone its normal course, he probably he probably would have uh, taken off in the daytime and been been alive. But that's you know, crazy. 
I also read that uh, most of the materials, the pictures and shit, and the investigative materials got burned in the fire. So whatever pictures of the bodies and shit, you'll, ne you'll never see that. But, you know, I'm sure if anybody saw a plane crash bodies, you could predict you could predict how that shit went. It's crazy, though, man. I don't know how they hit a tree on liftoff. But yet the plane goes down and everybody dies instantly That because that shouldn't be that high off the ground. I'm like, I'm like, damn, that's crazy. But that, apparently that's what happened. But, um. Yeah, again, all these uh, Negroes who were supporting uh, Harris for the dumbest reasons, such as saying, oh, well, she's a woman and she's so-called black. Which I always maintain that she is black. She's just not a black American. Um, again, that's where the Pan-Africanism. So they call her black just because they want you to vote for her. They didn't call her black because they felt that East Indians were black. See, I'm calling her black because East Indians are black. I don't care about politics. I don't care about culture. I don't care about ideology. If you get you an East Indian woman, stick your dick in her. Probably shouldn't be that explicit, but you know, you get the idea. Get her pregnant. Are your kids coming out looking mixed? Matter of fact, you know what? Because I was looking up Uncle Black Uncle Tom's the other day. <laughs> so, I don't know what made me, well... I was thinking about Alan Keyes because I thought he died. That's why. I didn't know he was married to an East Indian woman. And you look at the kids. Apparently his daughter is a lesbian. And a lesbian activist. Another Republican conservative with, with a lesbian uh, child. So his wife is East Indian. The kids don't look mixed. Now, the hair, of course, is a little compromised because Alan Keyes definitely has some what you would call crisp hair. But other than that, you can't have two types of black coming together and call that mixed. Unless you're a dimwit. You just can't do that. I mean, you get these so-called Latinos who are mixed within the same family and they act like they are not mixed. But they can't describe what they are. That's why I always say you want to uh, get on them, ask them, and, and they talk about, oh, you're racist. You, this is racist. You always say, let's start with the race you're talking about. What's the race first? Tell me the race, and then I'll see if it's racist. And I bet you they can't answer. Even if they could answer, they don't want to answer. Because they can't make the claim of being racist. And say that I'm white. Now your claim is invalid. It's just like Iranians. So-called Arabs. And other groups. You cannot. When you get pissed off. Or you try to get slick and manipulate the system. You can't say oh the white man is racist. Oh yeah. Well he classifies you as white. You're living in. Nice neighborhoods, and you're going to the best schools. You're making good money. How is he racist? If he was racist, matter of fact, he could just say, "Hey, man, I'm not. I'm reclassifying you, motherfuckers. Now, you are now black." Watch him get pissed. They'll 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 take whatever the white man was giving them before that. Now, that's why you don't hear too many of them complaining about what the white man does because they know. Being classified as white is good for them. Even if they don't feel that they're white. Even if they're not necessarily totally treated like they're white. Economically speaking, they are. You go to a rich area, you'll see Iranians, Arabs, all types of people looking like in, in black, all crazy ways, Italians, Greek, all black looking and shit. But on paper, they're white. And the white man gives them money and privilege to go along with that whiteness. That's why when Negroes like Tariq Nashi keep calling uh, Hispanics white. Where's the money at? Now you got a variety of Hispanics, so you're going to have a whole bunch of different uh, economic classes because you got products made uh, 
from Latin America, but it's fruits or even some the shit you keep seeing in that purple bag, those uh whatever the fuck they are, corn chip or whatever the fuck they are. Uh plantains and you know, all types of shit. Cause you got a variety of so called Hispanics. See, from their perspective, they'll show you the white one and say, see, we're white. No, he's white. Not you. It's just how shit works, man. I'm not going to hold you up for too long on this one. Uh, but as far as uh, I'm glad Harris is, you know, we can, hopefully we can not hear any more from her. She's talking about she wants to continue the mission, which is more bullshit because nobody nominated her to begin with. Number one. That's the key thing. Biden. They probably told him to step aside because he's too fucking. He looks dead. He's out of his mind. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we really shouldn't have two elderly individuals. Now they say before Biden was the oldest man uh, as president. Now it's Trump again. And we thought Ronald Reagan was old. But again, Trump has energy. So that's the difference between him and a Biden and a Ronald Reagan. So <laughs> it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, but this is how they want to do it. We'll see how things go. Now I was just reading that Trump had pardoned that Harry O. He pardoned a lot of black people for races. I don't know why he pardoned Harry O. The guy who uh, financed uh, Suge Knight for the death row. It's a pretty strange pardon. I don't know how people are getting the word to him about certain guys, but he's doing it. So he's pardoning a lot of black people. So, I mean, these super liberals. I don't like people who are like the Afro think tank who tell you, oh, I'm voting for this black woman or this woman because I call her black. She's going to be for us, even if she said no. That's why it doesn't make sense to do all that. And then when when the loss uh, comes into play, people are looking down and out. But you would have been down and out if she had uh, won. And people say that it's going to be the end of the earth with Trump. You already saw how Trump did. So it wasn't the end of the earth then. So, again, my only concern is that Trump knows Putin. I don't understand that shit. And then you got the uh, Zelensky, the Ukrainian president. Congratulating Trump. I left a comment on a video because I'm like. Motherfucker didn't Russia. How come Russia didn't checkmate this guy yet? I'm like, how's a guy that whose country is designated for conquest? He's not just getting bombed just for the hell of it. It's about conquest. Ever since this happened, the guy has been going on TV, traveling to different countries, inviting people to, to his country where that's under attack. I'm like, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. That's why some shit just doesn't seem right. Historically, when it's wartime, you can even see with the United States. They checkmate the leader. Take out the leader. Take out Gaddafi. Take out Saddam Hussein. Take out Noriega. Uh, what was that guy that was in uh, Sarajevo? Take them out. Take out Hitler, even though now I guess his body's never been found. Now, I guess you could say somebody must have been hiding him. Uh, whoever, whatever country they invade, they don't stop until they killed the leader. And they, in the U.S., you think other countries are ruthless, ruthless, but the U.S. usually takes out their immediate family, too. So that's why I understand how this Ukrainian president is still around. Being able to go on the internet. How do you have internet? 
How do you have cell phone service? When people go to war, that's what they do. They take out your telecommunications. They take out your electricity. They take out your food supplies. <laughs> it's just like with Bin Laden. And that's how you could. That also ties into Bill Clinton, Bush to how all these presidents are connected. Just they just finishing their piece of the plan. Bin Laden was supposed to have been worth $200 million. And they tell you that. See, this is the thing. When, when they plan shit, they always got to over plan. I don't even want to get into the Lee Harvey Oswald shit again, but they over plan for him because they knew he, he was going to die. So they wanted to be able to answer almost every question somebody would have as to what he did, how he did it. But, of course, without him explaining it, because he would explain it in a different way. That's what they did with Bin Laden. Well, he caused the 9-11. They didn't prove it. Never did. But that's why they said he was worth $200 million because that's how you finance it. That, and Leo Oswald having been in the Marines, that's how, why he was able to pull off the shots. That's what they're going by. But. As you know, with the United States, when they deal with people, first thing they do is they cut off your assets. Everybody they invaded, they, they seized the assets. See, that's why you're never a sovereign nation. How could another nation just seize your assets? But they didn't do that with Bin Laden. You can't carry $200 million around with you. He has to go to a bank. But they never explained that, of course. And they never explained, even if somebody's a Muslim, they're going to be ruthless enough to say, damn, 200 million. I forgot how much the bounty he had on his head, too. But they knew nobody was ever going to collect on that shit. Matter of fact, I got to put that footage on the uh, Rumble channel, the Knowledge is What's Up Rumble channel, because that's the other shit I was supposed to put up, the raw footage of events as they happen. But um, Bin Laden also had a cell phone service. He also had satellite TV. How do we know that? Because one of the stand-in Bin Ladens, they show, I don't know why they somebody would record Bin Laden watching TV and turning the channels. I, don't, I just don't understand that, but, you know, that's what they want us to believe. So the fact that if he was supposed to have been hiding out, he can get satellite. Is it an illegal satellite hookup or, or, or is it direct TV? Well, I mean, <laughs> what is it? But that's what they want you to believe. And they always talk about they were able to trace his chit chat on the phone through his cell phone. So you knew his number. If you, We all know if they know your number, they could trace the service. Who's the service provider? And of course, the government they could, and, and the service provider, they could track you down and tell you where you're at. So Bin Laden supposedly did 9-11, carried $200 million around with him. Had cell phone service where the U.S. could eavesdrop on conversations, but couldn't find out where the fuck the motherfucker was at. But yet, when we watch First 48 and these other police shows, the first thing the local police do is find out where they were tracked at. And they find it. So you think the government can't do that with all their advanced shit get, get out of here with this shit it's all bullshit that's what it is as far as wars go i think the next war on the horizon you know they've been trying to build up to take down iran since the uh revolution um and Ever since 9-11 happened, that, that's the whole purpose of that. It's so they can surround Iran. See, people don't understand. Iran is like three times the size of Iraq and very mountainous. And they put Saddam, the Bushes, put Saddam Hussein in power to take Iran out. But he couldn't do it. And then he sees Kuwait. They said, fuck it, we got we to gotta, you know, show you what's up. 
See, that's why Bush didn't, Bush won. That's why he didn't kill Saddam Hussein. Because Saddam Hussein was their hired thug. They just had to show him, listen, man, we didn't hire you to take Kuwait. God damn it. We hired you to take out Iran. Now, Bush, too, took out Saddam Hussein. His excuse was this man tried to kill my daddy. Bush one was still alive and coherent. He could have told him, you know, father, you know, even though that's his father. I mean, he, he could still tell the president. Because he's a former president, too. He, he could still tell him. And former CIA director, you could tell him. Now, nah, I don't do it. But. He, he let him do it. Because Saddam Hussein. Was no longer needed. He failed at his mission. So now the U.S. has to uh, say we, we, we might have to step in for this and, and take care of this shit ourselves. That's why the 9-11 happened, because they can surround Iran. Because it's so big, you got to surround it. But see, as they waited so long, now you got Iran making missiles, making drones. Still ain't no match for what the U.S. can bring, but you still... So that's why Afghanistan, that's a mountainous country, too. That's That was hard to get into. So that's why you got to plan the shit right. And Iran and Syria, those are the last of Israel's uh, opposition, so to speak. We'll see how it goes. I mean, whatever the case is, the bankers, the small hat bankers, they got the plan. And the rest of these puppets fall in line. I want to see where, where this RFK Jr. I want to see where he, uh, what part he plays into this shit too. I want to see if it's a grand scheme of... Let me use another Kennedy or let me act like I'm using them or including them in. And then maybe Trump in his last year, he might, uh, you know, say, you know what? America, let me be honest. Uh, we we got to tell it like it is. Our government took out a former senator and a former president. Unless we're going to move on, we got to make it right. We got to be honest. You might do all that kind of shit in this final uh, six months or something like that. Might, might not. We'll see. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, watch all the paid off people. That includes the Michi X as well. They're going to keep talking about it. What is it? November. They might get paid. It's possible they can still get more checks to the end of the month. Or by the 15th. And then once they stop talking about it, that's when you know the checks came to an uh, end. And their services are completed. See, when you listen to conservative radio, like the Sean Hannity's, the Mark Levin's, and these other guys. That's why you never hear the end of their talking because they're getting paid year round. <laughs> And big money, too. That's why black Uncle Toms, they're quick to get into conservative uh, media because they pay. I mean, you can't be yourself, but you can get paid. You got to assume the identity of your paymasters. But see, these part-time mercenaries, they'll stop talking about the shit after a while because, you know, their job is done. Then they'll move on to going back to scamming black people. And that'll be that. So with that being said, I'm going to let this go and I'm out of here.